It's Emily here. New scenery. We're in the kitchen. Today we're going to cook, what is it called? I don't know what it's called. It's just a family recipe that my grandma's been cooking for years and I love it and the whole family loves it. We call it like, it's called, we call it fried apples, but it's technically like fried, it's like smothered and yummy stuff. All right, so let's get started with our ingredients. First ingredient you're going to need is just a cutting board, something to cut on. Second ingredient you're going to need is a knife. Now, if you're little, you have a parent help you. Uh, you're going to need a juicy apple. You could do more than one apple depending on how many apples you're going to be. Um, so you're going to need apple, butter. I'm not going to use this whole stick of butter. I just butter. Because you kind of estimate to, depending on the size of the pan you use. Okay, vanilla, vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract. It'll make your apples so good. If you don't like vanilla, you don't have to add it. They'll be just as good without it. Ground cinnamon. Ground cinnamon is so yummy, and it'll make your apples have flavor. Sugar. Whiter brown sugar will do. Then my grandmother loves to cook on cast iron, so cast iron pan. You do not have to use a cast iron pan. She says it makes stuff taste better, but I'm not sure about that. So, cast iron. Does not have to be cast iron, any pan will do. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your knife. Make sure you're cutting on your cutting surface. You're just gonna cut your apple directly in half. Like that. You're gonna flip your apple to where the flat side is on the ground. Then you're going to cut it in half again to where you have fourths. Yummy fourths. Yummy fourths. Okay, so you're going to have fourths of your apple. Okay, then you're going to take your apple and you're going to cut it. Just cut the core out. I don't know how to cut the core out too well. Oh, okay, so my knife magically changed sizes. That is because my grandma just informed me that this does not core as good as this. So you're going to use a smaller knife. I find a bigger knife is better for cutting an apple open because I have more leverage because I'm small and weak. But a smaller knife is better just for uh, coring an apple. So you're just going to core it and just, it's not going to, it doesn't have to look perfect. It doesn't have to look good at all actually. You're just going to core. Core it out. Then you're just going to cut it in half again. Get all the icky core out. Cut it in half again and just set it inside. You're going to end up with eight. You set it aside because there is some other stuff you have to do your pan first. Okay, while I mention that, it's probably a good time to go ahead and do that while you're coring your apples. So let's hurry and jump into that. You're going to take your butter. I do about two tablespoons of butter. So I'm just going to cut that up because butter has a great taste to it, don't you think? You're going to just cut that up. And you're going to take your butter and you're going to pop it in your pan and light your pan. And you're just going to put it on a semi, I put it on three, like a semi low heat, and I just kind of push it around a little bit at the beginning, and I'm just going to let that go. Let me put my butter back in my refrigerator. Okay, so I let that do, and now I'm going to finish coring my apples. I'm going to add music in here. This will not be seen because it's a really awkward moment. Pause it. Okay. All right, guys. So my butter is in my pan. I forgot one very important ingredient. I mean, not ingredient, but thing to use. Something else you're going to need. Tablespoons. These are going to be great. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tablespoon. I'm going to do about one tablespoon of sugar to start. Whoops. Making a little bit of a mess. Okay. Then I'm going to... Move my butter around. You don't want it all the way. You don't have to have it all the way melted when you add your sugar. But you just sprinkle your sugar around in there. Stir it up real good. You don't want to make it black or burnt. But you definitely, definitely want um, it to get brown. And if you, you don't think it's enough sugar, because remember, you are going to have cinnamon and vanilla in there. So don't over sugar it. But if you don't think it's enough sugar, then go ahead and add yourself some more. Um, depending on how much butter you want to use, the butter is really just to make it, butter tastes good, but it's also really just to make it 
so it doesn't stick because sugar really sticks because I'm kind of caramelizing it. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of sugar just because it doesn't look like enough to me. So the butter is going to kind of... Uh, so if you want less butter or more butter or less sugar or more sugar, it's up to you. I'm going to finish coring this last apple to get all that icky. And be sure not to cut yourself or cut into your finger or cut towards yourself because that is a very hazardous thing to do. So I got all my eight apples all cut up and I'm just going to push that aside now. Okay, so I'm going to keep, make sure I keep a stir on here because I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit just while I finish letting this brown because I do not want it to burn whatsoever. You want to keep it a really good stir. It's kind of going to look like, I don't know, like a caramel butter. Um, um, maybe I should add more sugar. No, no, I don't think so. I think that that sugar is just perfect. See, um, if you come get a really, come get a close look, uh, this is, that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. Right there. Hey guys, um, another reason pie wall pans are really good is because sometimes you want to put a little bit of water in to cook a little faster, but be careful, it might sizzle and go rock. If you're going to pour above, go way high up and pour from the side. See, look, about that much water, not even enough to cover the whole bottom of the whole pan. Just enough to where your apples cook down a little bit. That's pretty much it. So all the water you're going to need, and just so your stuff doesn't burn. You do not want this camera to burn. And it's going to sizzle and pop. I just got pops. <laughs> not bad. Just a little quick. So you are going to kind of wash it around a little bit. Let your apples cook down pretty well. Alright, that's all I just wanted to add. I'll check back with y'all in a minute. Okay, guys. So one more quick thing I wanted to add is that um, a, you don't want, it doesn't have to be deep, but a pot with hot, a pan with high walls is probably better in case you like splash because you do not want to get this everywhere. And if you come look at my pot now, it's not brown yet. It's about halfway there. It's about halfway there. So you can kind of see it's going to really bubble. That's when you kind of kind of keep it moving a little bit because it's going to kind of get sticky. You just kind of want to do something like this. Stir in and out and push. See, now my, it's really trying to... Yeah, and really be careful not to burn yourself because if you do push too hard, it will splash. That's why I said higher walls are better. Okay, so it's getting really close. It's kind of caramelizing, which... In a couple days, you'll be watching this probably in an hour. So in a couple days, um, in tomorrow or two or three days, we will have a recipe up for caramel and caramel apples, which will be so yummy. I love to cook. I really do. So you're going to be seeing a lot of cooking videos on my channel. All right. That's getting pretty close. I think that's about done. All right. Let's just turn, kick that fire most off. Actually, I am going to turn it off for a minute. Just because I feel like it's getting very hot very fast. Make sure it doesn't want to stick. I'm going to keep moving it even though my fire is off because it's still really hot. So, just let it cool down a little bit.